Hello folks, Jorge D'Amico here. This is the final episode of the wood palette series in 135 scale. In the last video, we covered the painting and detailing process of the wood palette in balsa wood. Today, we will go over the process for the polystyrene palettes in order for them to look realistic and aesthetically pleasing. As we've seen before, wood palettes in real life come not only in natural pine wood tone color, as well as in a variety of different accent colors added by companies and manufacturers. In addition to that, they can get pretty beat up and dirty, which gives us modelers many options for weathering them. On today's show, I will share my seven steps for painting the palettes scratch built out of polystyrene strips. We will cover priming, foundation, base pine wood tone, adding color, tonal variation for additional contrast, chipping, and blending. And don't worry about taking notes now. Feel free to watch the video until the end. The step-by-step -step guide with the materials and tools I used is available for download on my website for free. The link is in the description below. And at the end of the video, I will share three bonus techniques that will take your palettes to the next level, making them stand out even more on your next diorama or vignette. So let's jump right into it. We start by priming the pieces. This will give us a solid foundation for the next steps as we proceed in adding more paint layers. Also, because I chose a dark brown color, it will give us the opportunity to make sure no white background is left visible. At this stage of the process, it's very important that we cover all nooks and crannies. Then we move to the next phase to apply with an airbrush the base coat, which will help us to create the illusion of different pine wood tones coming up in the next step. In order to achieve that, we will paint the palettes with three different colors separately, which will give you a variety of tones. Depending on the look you are trying to achieve, apply the paint lightly or heavier, trying to preserve some of the brown background color in random areas so you can not only emulate shadow, but also variation in tonality. The airbrush is an essential tool to help us achieve this result, because it allows us to control the amount of paint we want in specific areas. We will use buff, ivory and desert tan. Now we will create the foundation by applying the pine wood color. We give the palettes a wash which will produce the pine wood tonality we are after. In order to do that, we will mix 10 drops of airbrush thinner and one or two drops of golden brown. As we've seen on the last video of this series, in real life some palettes never receive coats of painting. They stay in their natural pine wood color and this is what we are reproducing in this phase. Make sure you give a nice coat to the entire surface, covering all gaps, corners and crevices. You can add more coats if you want them to look darker. As you can see, I've added some variation on my samples simply by adding an extra coat of the wash. This is the time you can decide to add the color you want. I recommend you to do a quick online research so you can find the color that best fits your needs. During my own search, I was able to find blue, red, yellow, and even green palettes. So pick the color or colors you want and go for it. The tonal variation phase gives the palettes a worn out or old look. Using a very diluted sepia oil color, you can apply the mixture on the entire surface or on a few planks only. This makes the piece more interesting, adding a controlled tonal variation on top of the pine wood or colored palettes. Here you can see the result of applying this step on selected areas. Unless you want to create a palette that looks brand new and never used, you have to add some tear to it. To simulate some wear and tear, I decided to take a simpler approach creating the chipping effect utilizing a very very fine brush and buff color in small amounts for a more controlled result, applying the paint sparingly on different areas of the palette. Finally, to harmonize all tones and colors we've applied so far, I use deck tan with the dry brush technique. I normally get a flat old brush for the job. Make sure you remove as much paint as you can from the brush with a paper towel. Less is more here. This will give you more control over the technique. The goal is to do it very gently on the corners and edges. 
you can see that this step gives a light dust effect and breaks the contrast between all paint layers applied so far. Okay, remember in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I would share three techniques that would take your palettes to the next level, making them stand out even more on your next diorama or vignette? So here they are. In general, palettes are heavily used and often scale modelers tend to focus the weathering on the top surface of the palette. But forklifts, and especially pallet trucks, will wear and leave marks where their wheels hit the wood while moving the fork blades underneath the pallet. This is what this technique is about, simulating these marks on the wood. For this task, we are using a black AK pencil. The next technique is about fresh oil or few stains, using Tamiya smoke paint to simulate recent dripped liquid marks. This paint leaves a realistic, fresh and shiny finish. A very easy trick that adds a lot of character to the palette. If you want to portray a worn out and old palette that perhaps has not been used anymore for a while, this last technique comes in handy. Very easy to apply using a wash from Vallejo, diluted with airbrush thinner to achieve the look you are after. Don't forget to check out my previous video, which shows a few different techniques to apply rust stains, oil marks, and heavy dust effect to the palettes. And there you have it, the final result. Wood palettes for your next 135 scale project. I hope you enjoyed this series as much as I did, and that these tutorials can inspire and help you to create your own wood palettes for your new builds. Let me know your feedback on the comment section below. You can find the link to download the PDF file with the materials, tools and instructions to follow along for free in the description below as well. It describes all the steps you saw me following on this episode. And if you like this video and you'd like to see me creating more content like this one, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Oh, and don't forget to click on the bell icon as well so you can keep up to date every time I post something new. Thanks for watching, we see each other on our next video. Ciao.